Hey, what's up? It's Tackless, and today I'm going to be doing the absolute most requested tutorial ever, checkpoints. Um, I got a really good system working for checkpoints, really happy with how it turns out. So, first off, I've just spawned here. We got this fire thing I'm going to use to kill myself. And as per you would expect, I respawn here, which is how it usually goes. I'm going to ignore the fire, and I'm going to walk through this door and activate first checkpoint. Got a little auditory cue there, I don't know if you heard that, and then we'll kill ourselves again. And look at that! We spawned right here, in the same room. Now we can go to the next room. Another auditory cue, and suicide again. Look at that, we respawned in this room. Let's see if I can make that jump, oh, and I can. Then let's head over to the next room. Should be getting the idea by this point. It's pretty straightforward. We'll kill ourselves again. And look at that, we respawn again in this room. Now what gets even more fun is that this is not necessarily linear. We can head back the same way we came. And same auditory cue. If we kill ourselves, we'll respawn in this same room again. Um, actually, no. We'll spawn in this room because we activated this checkpoint, which is for this room. Sorry about that. If we wanted to respawn in this room, we would need to go back through this door. And kill ourselves again. There we go. And we respawn in this room. So, you can go back and forth through these checkpoints as many times as you want, and um, it'll always activate. So, we went through that checkpoint, suicide, and we're back. So, this is pretty straightforward. It took me a while to get figured out how the stupid respawning system would work exactly, and I kept running into weird little hiccups and bugs, but I got it all sorted out, and it should be good to go. So, let's go ahead and get this created. First off, I'm going to delete some of these rooms. I uh, no, not that one. Delete that, and that, and there we go. Just so we get a nice, clean start. And I'm just going to put in, yeah, we'll just put in an arena, put in another arena, and put in another arena. And this works best for linear maps, but this could work okay for an open world type map. Um, or less linear, but um, I don't know. For for those kind of maps, like I'm thinking like a Call of Duty Zombies kind of map, respawning in one location doesn't seem like it's that bad. Mostly it's these linear maps people want respawning, or I'm sorry, checkpoints for. So let's start. We'll get rid of our player. Get rid of that. This is just a piece of code to let me respawn faster. Step one, let's throw in our player. Player start. Okay, so here's our guy. This is where we're going to be respawning. Now, we need to make a variable. I'm going to make an integer. Make a new one. Let's call it current checkpoint. Choose our icon. Doesn't really matter, naturally. We'll do... That looks good. Let's set the initial value to 1. Just for good measure, so we know that this is being activated, we're also going to put on changed, and then we're going to put an audio cue, or a little 2D speaker, play, because this will play anywhere in the map, regardless where any of the players are. Let's go to beep. It's up to you what sound you want to use. I'm just going to use beep. Okay. So now we'll know when our checkpoints are being activated. Next, I'm going to move this guy up so i got some more room behind him. We're going to grab a player proxy. And on killed, then we're going to go to flow, and we're going to do an integer compare. Um, so we're going to test that. On the left hand side, we're going to pick our current checkpoint variable. On the right hand side, we're going to choose 1. And then when it is equal, we're going to hover over our person and put enable player start. And then if it is not equal, we will disable our player start. Okay? 
So, um, that's most of the code there. Something that we also need to do is we also need to include on killed self. And just for good measure, let's also put on incapacitated. So every time the player dies, kills himself, or is incapacitated, this is going to check to see where our player should respawn at. Uh, just move this up a little bit, get it a little bit more condensed. There we go. Um, yeah. Now, we'll want to leave the first place that the player spawns enabled. If you hit the settings for our player, we can put enable true or false. We'll, we'll want to leave this first one true so that our player has an initial place to spawn. Now, we're going to double tap right trigger or whatever it is on the system you're using. Duplicate this and we're going to start placing this guy wherever we want a checkpoint. So let's put a checkpoint right here. And then for this integer compare, we're gonna set this to two. And then we're going to disable, or we're gonna have it start uh, with the enabled false. Copy this, let's head to the next room. Obviously you don't need to do this room by room. You could do this hard section by hard section if you'd like. Uh, we're gonna change the integer compare to three. Copy this. Where did I put the next room? Is that it? Or did I only do two rooms? No, there's doorways over here. Oh, where did I put him? Oh, there we go. So we'll grab this guy again. Here's the door. Put a checkpoint here. And I think, yep, that's our last room. So this... Got to fix his integer compare as well, put it to four. This is how the actual checkpoints themselves will respawn our player. Now we need to decide um, how we're going to have the checkpoints activate. Good way to do it is just with a volume. Gonna head back over here to the uh, spawning module. So let's put a volume out. Box trigger, put one by this door here. And we're gonna show on start false so that it's transparent. Uh, I don't care about the color. Size, gonna make it a little bit deeper. Pretty wide, pretty tall. That way it fits in most doorways nicely. Then our code is going to be on entered. Uh, then we're gonna go to our variable, go to our integer variable. Pick our integer variable and we're gonna put set. Set integer and the value is going to be one because this is the number one checkpoint and our initial value is one this is where our first um, checkpoint is going to be now this won't actually activate at first but this is pretty much put here in case the player backtracks it'll reset the uh, checkpoint back to that spawn then we'll copy this have our head over to this doorway I like doorways because they kind of trap the player and force them to go through these uh, volumes so that you're guaranteed to uh, have this checkpoint activate. Then we're gonna set the integer to two. Pretty much we're just gonna rinse and repeat this process. Head over to this doorway. Make sure it fills the whole doorway. Set this integer to three. Copy. here Let's set this integer to four there we go so that's a working checkpoint system that is activated automatically if the player walks through these doors something else that we could do instead let's say that you wanted the checkpoints to be a little bit more upfront with the player rather than something that happens nice and magically in the background we could have something that they have to hit a button to activate their checkpoint more like old retro games. It's gonna be a lot of the same code. You're just gonna grab like a panel and when on used, we're gonna pick the integer, set the integer and set this integer to one. And depending if you wanted them to be able to reuse this, then you would select allow reuse true false. So this would be another way that we could change what the um, checkpoint is. 
Obviously, there's a number of other ways, like if you wanted a checkpoint to happen, um, like, let's, like, we could have an enemy, and on AI spawned, we could pretty much do the same code, um, with the integer set to two, something like that, so that when an enemy spawns, it can activate a checkpoint, alternately when... AI is killed. We could set it to a different checkpoint. Really, almost anything that can happen can trigger your checkpoint. It's really up to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this guy because I don't want to deal with that. But let's let's just give it a shot, make sure everything works right. Okay, so we're spawned in here, kill ourselves, then we'll respawn right back here. There we go. Now I don't have a good way to kill myself. So we'll kill ourselves there, and we respawn nicely in this room. And if we head back, I walk through this door, this change of the checkpoint back again. So if we kill ourselves, we respawn in here. And also for good measure, I'll use that panel. So first we'll set our checkpoint here, and then we can reset our checkpoint with the button. And now it'll spawn me where I originally spawned because I had that set to one. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, I know this is something that everyone and everyone else has been requesting and I've been thinking on how to do it right and I definitely feel happy and comfortable with this solution. So let me know what you guys think. If you found a simpler way or a better way or a more flexible way, definitely let me know. Or um, if you guys have a suggestion for another tutorial, probably going to be looking at how to set up a multiplayer, uh, set up a multiplayer game here pretty soon, although that's pretty straightforward. Okay, let me respawn in this room. Um, this video was made partially because I, I put a poll up on Twitter to see what people wanted to see in my next video. And by far, like 60 some percent respawning and revival uh, settings got voted up. So I figured checkpoints and reviving, very important. People clearly want to know how to do this. So hopefully this is a good solution. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you have any other ideas for a tutorial in the comments. And I will see you guys 